Is Roblox development a viable career path? This is a question that many people have asked me. Smarty, can I do Roblox development as my job? Recently, I made a video that shows you how to turn this fuel into your job. It broke this down step by step. It broke it down into all the different career paths you can go down. But the question still remains, is it a good choice to try and make this your job? Is this something you can make a living from? Is this something you can build a thriving business from? Today, we're gonna discuss this question. We're gonna look at a whole bunch of different factors so you can help yourself decide if you want to do this as a career. So first thing, most devs, when they try to make Roblox development a job, are stuck in the hobbyist mindset. The way they look at making Roblox development their job is, oh, I am going to make the best game in the world. I'm going to make a game to change Roblox. Everybody's going to love me for it. And therefore, I will be a millionaire. I will be rich. I used to think this way years back. I was in the hobbyist mindset. This mindset sounds good on the surface, right? I want to make this amazing game. I want to make this very complex project. I want to revolutionize Roblox. I want to be the savior of Roblox with my game, the next Brookhaven, but better. The problem with this mentality, you're setting this sky high expectation for yourself and you're pushing all your chips into one pile. You're betting everything on one move, on one big game. And the amount of devs that do this is insane because they don't have better information, right? Until my channel came along and exposed the hobbyist mindset for what it is, there was no way to discover strategy first thinking unless you were already somebody who has business experience, has mobile game development experience, or has been developing on Roblox for years and figured out the truth through years of failed attempts or figured out part of the truth, right? You're partially strategy first because you made a lot of failed games or successful games, right? Maybe you've made your passion projects that didn't work, but then you made some simulators, those did work. So now a lot of devs will end up in this space where they're partly strategy first, right? They think, oh yeah, if I make these types of games that people want, some simple games, I can blow up, I can get a lot of players, I can make a lot of money. But they still hold some shame to that. They think they're doing something wrong. They feel like, oh, I'm just making cash grabs. They feel kind of icky about it, like they aren't doing development the right way. That is hobbyist mindset programming, trying to convince you that what you're doing is wrong when what you're doing is, first of all, making what players want, and second of all, building a career for yourself and benefiting you. There is nothing wrong with that. But the problem is when most devs are stuck in the hobbyist mindset, most devs will never make a career out of this. So if you want to enter the group of devs who do make a career out of this, you got to stop betting everything on one dream game. You got to stop betting everything on one monetization pathway working out. You got to stop betting everything on passion. You got to make a Roblox development career strategy. So the point of strategy is to give you more control over the outcome. It doesn't guarantee success, but it increases the chances of it. That's why there are different board games, right? There's board games like Uno and Candyland, which people say, oh yeah, these games aren't based on strategy. It's just all randomness and luck. And then there's board games like Risk, where everything is built on strategy. You can win or lose based on strategy alone, and a more experienced player who knows a very good strategy for Risk can beat you because you're just trying to play this as a game of luck, trying to take over the world, trying to get all the countries just through chance, right? That's you. When you're playing like a luck-based Candyland player in Risk, you're gonna get slaughtered by the competition, simple truth. Now the problem is most devs think Roblox development is Candyland. If you don't know what Candyland is, it's a very simple kids game, one of the simplest, easiest board games out there for the youngest audience possible, where you're just trying to get to the end of the board and it's all based on randomness. Like you roll a dice and that's how many squares you move forward. It's literally the main entire mechanic of the game. No strategy whatsoever. Roblox development is a lot more like Risk. You're trying to take over Roblox. You're trying to make a game that gets the most attention, and the most income and the most players possible. And oftentimes we're also trying other methods, right? We're doing other Roblox development career paths. We're doing dev content, like what I'm doing right here, I'm teaching you. Or making dev assets, selling those on a site, right? Selling your 3D models pack, selling your systems for an anime game. These things are all different paths you can take in Roblox development. 
So is Roblox development a viable career? Yes, if you follow a strategy. If you are strategy first. No, if you are Candyland. If you are hobbyist mindset. So if you're stuck in the hobbyist mindset, if you think all games that try to make money are cash grabs, you're basically doomed, right? For most of you, you will not succeed that way. Yeah, there are some people who succeed off passion alone, but that is a small subset of devs. The majority of devs who are successful are strategy first to varying de degrees. When we go on Roblox and we see all these simple games succeeding, who is making those? It's people who have figured out the business side of Roblox. It's people who have figured out how to conquer this platform from a strategy first perspective, as opposed to just passion, as opposed to a passion only perspective. So for some math, right? The top games on Roblox have millions of players online at any given time. 33 Nights in the Forest, Steal a Brain Rot, and Grow a Garden have millions of players on at any given time. Therefore, each of these games are making tens of millions of dollars a month. So, of course, this can be a viable career. Let's just be honest, most devs are not going to reach that level of success. So, that makes people wonder, well, okay, if the only way to be a successful dev is to be front page, and there's only a few devs on the front page, is it possible to make this your job? Well, they say, well, no, it's too hard to get to the front page. But the problem is they're just looking at the very tippy top of the mountain. There's also the whole rest of the mountain where plenty of devs are making enough money to live from various income earning methods on Roblox. So no, you don't have to be Jandel. You don't have to be at the top of the front page in order to make Roblox development your job. You can be a medium sized dev with a few thousand CCU or even just a thousand and make $10,000 a month or more. We had somebody in our community for example, make 2 million Robux having 1,000 CCU in just a month. So take that as an example of how much you can earn. That is enough money to sustain one person. That's more than enough. Now, another misconception is you need to make a game at all to make this your job. You do not. You can take commissions. You can make dev content. You can sell dev assets or game templates. You can sell plugins even. You can do all these different things. You can make UGC to make Roblox development your job without ever publishing a game on the Roblox platform. So look at these other methods, start there, right? If you are someone who doesn't wanna make a full game or if you only have one Roblox development skill like animation, start with one of these methods. You can teach people how to make animations on YouTube. You can do animation challenges, remaking animations from the top games on Roblox, remaking Blocks Fruit animations, right? And you can make dev content about that, right? There's Rodev, there's me, there's all kinds of dev content creators who have blown up, who are taking over this space, and you can join them. There's very little competition there. There's also dev assets, right? You can sell animation packs. You can sell them on your own website, and you can use a site like ConvertKit or Gumroad to put those out there, and then you can promote them on X to people. So these are some very good methods to earn money from what you know about Roblox development without ever putting out a game. So go ahead and watch both of these videos. This video will show you how to plan out your Roblox development career strategy. And this one will show you how to tap into each of the monetization methods and career paths we talked about in this video. Put these together, you can turn this into your career. You can make a living from this. I make thousands a month, mostly from dev content at the moment. You can do the same thing. You don't have to have a front page game. I don't have a front page game and yet this is my job. So watch those videos, plan out your career and take action. Strategy first lessons are dropping in scripting secrets. So make sure to join that below. That is my course.